Now, it's been an extraordinary week in what it's revealed about what some men think about rape. George Galloway said sex with a sleeping woman was bad sexual etiquette. The former diplomat, Craig Murray, revealed the name of one of the Swedish women accusing Julian Assange of sexual misconduct. In this country, victims have the right to anonymity unless they choose to reveal themselves. And most staggeringly of all, an American politician, the Republican Congressman Todd Akin, said you can't get pregnant from legitimate rape, whatever that might be. But why, after all the campaigning and the significant changes to the sexual offences legislation introduced in 2003, did these kind of myths about rape still have currency? Well, Alison Saunders is the Chief Crown Prosecutor for the CPS in London. She joins us from Canterbury on her phone. And Lisa Longstaff is Project Coordinator of Women Against Rape. Lisa, how surprised were you to hear these views this week? Not surprised at all, really. Um, there are many people who, as you've just reported, make ridiculous comments about rape. Um, some of the common things that you hear is that you can't be raped if you were drunk, it was your own fault. Women can't be raped by their own husbands. Um, sex workers can't be raped because it's part of their job. Women commonly lie about rape and make false allegations all over the place. There had to be violence or physical injury to prove rape. There are many, many, many myths that are used to discredit women. Now, Alison, the CPS decided to publish a document outlining some of these myths. Why do you do that? Um, well, it was followed on from training that we did for all of our prosecutors um, to make sure that they were aware of the myths and stereotypes and to make sure that nobody subscribed to them. But also we published this on our website because it was useful for other people who might sit on juries who might come into contact with the criminal justice system or who um, don't have much of an understanding of this sort of area to have a look at it and to, to help them better understand why these myths and stereotypes are wrong. So, Lisa, how welcome was that document? Well, we felt that it was uh, very annoying because um, we have been banging away for 35 years to put pressure on the police and Crown Prosecution Service to change the way evidence is gathered, the way it's presented in court, and, you know, to try to raise the appalling conviction rate, which is only 6.7%. And we feel that when, when the CPS kind of puts out information about myths and often in its PR blames juries for being prejudiced, we tear our hair out because we feel that the cases are not always handled properly. You know, women are constantly coming to us and complaining that um, the police didn't react quick enough, they didn't gather the evidence in time, the evidence was carelessly handled or was lost, or the CPS misinterpreted it, and many, many cases are closed by the CPS. You know, we feel that they have a big responsibility to um, hold rapists to account using the criminal justice system and to provide women with protection and justice. So, Alison, to what extent are lawyers and the police and judges looking to blame juries for low conviction rates and not themselves? Um, I don't think we do that at all. We um, accept that our performance um, is improving but it can improve even more. Um, I don't think we say it is just about juries. This is about an information. It's one of a sort of whole list of things that we're doing to improve our service. So our um, conviction rate of cases that are charged and go to court is 62.5%, which last year was the highest ever. And we're prosecuting more cases than we ever have done before. Um, what we need to do is we train prosecutors. We've got 800 specialist prosecutors across England and Wales who prosecute rape cases. They've all been trained. I, like other chief crown prosecutors, have been trained to understand the impact of um, rape on victims, how uh, victims might behave, how we can analyse their evidence and how we can produce strong cases to go before the court. But Alison, why has it taken so long, as Lisa said, they have been banging on about this for 35 years. Mm. Um, yes, it's been a long time. Um, I mean, we've been looking at this um, as well, and certainly our conviction rate is far higher than it ever has been. Um, there are lots of reasons why um, we've looked at legislation as it's gone along. So 
things like using the merits-based approach, so not using a sort of um, looking at things objectively if it's one person's word against the other. You don't have to look for corroboration. Prosecutors in the past used to think you used to have to do that. We know now we don't. Um, so we will take cases forward looking at whether or not we can use pre-trial witness interviews with victims. So prosecutors interviewing them to see how we can strengthen the case. So Lisa, the, the, the prosecution rate, uh, the conviction rate is improving. The conviction rate is improving very slowly, but the number of reported rapes has shot up in London by over 50% in five years, and the conviction rate in London has nowhere near kept up with that rate. And one of the problems that people have is they don't know the truth about what's happening. We hear a lot of PR about how the police have changed, how the CPS have changed, how you have specialist officers and specialist prosecutors. But I'm afraid that women have an enormous struggle to get rapists brought to bear, brought to justice. And there is no one there to help them. People do not want to criticize the police. Charities and other groups are afraid to speak because they don't want to lose their funding or their job prospects. And women and men that we've met in those institutions who want to do their best and who really care about rape are not the ones who are being promoted. We've met some really good officers who are really caring and determined, but they are not the ones who are in charge and who say what the priorities should be. And I'm afraid that the public is very badly served. So, Alison, what needs still to be done to improve the situation that Lisa has just described? Um, I think there are a number of things. Um, one, we still need to, because there is a high attrition rate between the number of reported cases and the number that are referred to the CPS. Yes, but a lot of um, those are closed by the police. Certainly in London, we are prosecuting and charging more cases that are referred to us than we have done before. Um, what we're looking at is making sure that we can build the strongest cases possible with the police, that people will come forward and that they will stay through the system as well because there's quite a large attrition rate throughout the system. And what we need to make sure is that we put those cases before the court as strongly as possible, not only so that victims can have their day in court, but hopefully um, guilty plea rates, which have also been going up over the course of the um, years, it's still much lower than for other categories of cases, but if they go up as well, it means the victims will get justice without having to go to court. And Lisa, surely it is important to debunk the myths. Otherwise, for example, a woman in a short skirt who is not a virgin, raped by an acquaintance, wouldn't bother to report it because she would think nobody would take it seriously. If the myths are debunked, that goes away. Of course that's important, but the first job is of the police and the CPS, and they have to stop prosecuting women who come forward and report rape. The priorities are wrong. If you're a sex worker, you're just as likely to be prosecuted for sex work. If you're an immigrant woman, you may end up being deported and sent back to rape and torture that you've fled, or you may just face racism. Look what a struggle Doreen Lawrence has had to bring her attackers to justice. A very similar doublespeak is going on with rape. The women's movement has demanded justice, but I'm afraid that the situation fundamentally still remains a problem. Alison? Um, that's not right at all. We will prosecute cases where we have evidence and we have shown that we will do that. We don't shirk from difficult cases. If you look at the figures in London, our conviction rate is going up, the number of cases we're charging is going up. What well, is the biggest reason for unsuccessful outcomes in those that we prosecute are jury acquittals. Um, I do think it helps um, if you can debunk some of the missing stereotypes. It amazes me that people still um, come out with things that show that they still exist. Um, and you think in this day and age, with so much campaigning that's been going on by groups like Women Against Rape and other groups over the years, that that would not be the case. Alison Saunders, Lisa Longstaff, thank you both very much indeed for being with us.